Freaky Friends. This is Colleen. And this is Margaret. And, and we're, we're the Cousins, Cousins Weird. Weird. And it's Terrible Trends number 36. Yay. It's crazy that we're on number 36. It is. I feel like we just started Terrible Trends and we haven't. We started We've, in January. Yeah. And we're going, you know, we're past our one year mark when, with our regular episodes. And we're almost going to hit our one year mark with our Terrible Trends. Terrible Trends. And it just blows my mind that we've been doing this for this long. We might need to merge terrible trends into, like, terrible religious trends, or... I think we can call it terrible trends, but it can go... It can branch. Branch out. It's like a mini episode. Yeah. Because this one technically isn't a trend either. That's okay. But it's kind of gives... Trends come from it, sort of. (laughs) Okay. So this is all about superstitions. Superstitions? No. No. You may think I said that, but I said shoe superstitions oh god because there's superstitions around shoes <laughs> so i made the word <laughs> superstitions oh, you are for my clever. episode <laughs> um clever in last girl. my last terrible trends i talked about shoes the crack owl remember yes. so i'm on that vein i kept going with it um surprisingly there's a lot of superstitions that surround shoes which i did not know about never heard of them But they have led to some bizarre trends or traditions throughout history. There were some weird things that came because of all these superstitions. The most popular belief around a shoe is luck. Okay. When someone's leaving on a long journey, it was considered good luck if you chucked your shoe at them. (laughs) (laughs) Didn't they do that in, where was it? To to President George W. Bush? Yes, it could be a form of protest. He was in another country and they chucked his sh- their shoe at his head. And that was because they were protesting, though. That was something different. Yes. Yeah, I remember that now that you said it. And I didn't even see that in this. Yeah. Um, but I think it was that culture's, like, way of protesting was chucking shoes. No. It, you, it, I'm he, sorry. If somebody threw their shoe at me, I would not take it as a sign of good luck. I would be no. like, stop throwing stop your, throwing your shoe at me. at me. Well, it was. And even, like, ships going on journeys and stuff, people would be throwing their shoes for good luck. That is. The, the, a fair, a safe return kind of thing. <laughs> uh, very weird. So it's seen through literature from the 17th century on. Like throughout literature, there's things about throwing shoes in it. And here's one quote from Lord Alfred Tennyson. And it was in a book that he wrote. It says. Good poet. For this thou shalt from all things seek marrow of mirth and laughter. And for whoever's thou move. Or wherever thou move, good luck shall throw her old shoe after. <laughs> so if you want good luck, you throw your shoe. Okay. Uh, there's a Scottish tradition that you throw a shoe over the house. It's just to say house, I put hose. Over the house. <laughs> <laughs> over those hose. <laughs> you throw your shoe over the house before you go on a trip. And wherever the toe points is the direction you start your journey. No matter where you're going. You would start where the toe points in that direction. Now, if the shoe flew over and landed sole up, that was a bad omen. So whatever you had planned, you better change it. Don't do it. plans. Now, if a man happened to, you weren't supposed to, a man wasn't supposed to put a shoe on the kitchen table, which I mean, really. Don't put any shoes on the kitchen table. You shouldn't be putting shoes on the table. That's dirty. If he, if he accidentally set the shoe on the table or it happened, that meant that there would be a fight that by, by the time the night's over. And if a woman actually... It would be a fight because his wife would yeah. brain him with the freaking shoe. <laughs> exactly. You're gonna Don't hit. put your filthy shoes on my clean table. And then if a woman did it, that meant pregnancy would be in the family. Oh, God. <laughs> no, I'm never going to do it. So you don't have to worry about it. If you want new shoes, Margaret, you just got to burn an old pair on Christmas Eve. Okay. And then new shoes will appear on Christmas. You got to have new socks, though, or the Yule cat will come and eat. Yes. You don't want the Yule cat to come get you. Mm-mm. I want a Yule Cat t-shirt this year, Colleen. Oh, you do that. To prevent nightmares, you want to place shoes at your bedroom door. One of the toes will point towards your room. The other will point away from your room. Now, this will confuse the demons that give you nightmares. They want, which way do I go? I don't know. The shoes are pointing two directions. So they won't give you a nightmare. Okay? Okay. Now, if you put your shoe on the wrong foot, you're going to have bad luck. So to correct this, you must spit in your shoe Ew. and then put it on the other foot. Yuck! You wear a shoe with spit in it? It's so yeah. gross! 
the most common <laughs> superstitions <laughs> surround weddings. It's so stupid. <laughs> You're stupid. You're stupid. Stu- You're stupid. Stupid. <laughs> Oh, Trashing is the tradition of throwing shoes at a couple returning from church from their wedding ceremony. That's great. Let's go throw our shoes at this newly married couple. <laughs> I'll start them out no. on the right foot. In poorer <laughs> communities where they didn't have a lot of money, they might not have enough shoes to go around. So instead, they would throw <laughs> turf sod and mud oh, at the newly married great. couple for good luck. That's terrible. <laughs> it's an awful tradition. <laughs> Don't do that. Oh, it gets worse. <laughs> oh, God. In Transylvania, <laughs> oh, throwing no. shoes after a wedding would increase fertility. That I mean, I guess that's whatever. Um, but in Anglo-Saxon marriages, you know those Anglo-Saxons, mm-hmm. the father of the bride gives the bride's shoe to the groom so he can bonk her on the head with it to show his authority. That's nice. So here's my daughter's shoe, and he whacks her in the head with it. Yeah. Because I'm in charge around here now. You. It's like the passing of property from the father what to they, the... they're wasps? Isn't that what they call them? White Anglo-Saxon... Protestants. Protestant... Shoe bonkers. Shoe bonkers! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. Man. In medieval <laughs> France, the groom sat with his shoe... Over the bride, <laughs> I typed really poorly on this. You can read it; it's ridiculous. The shoe <laughs> over the bride's shoe to show he was in charge. Oh, so he'd sit there with his I'd foot take on my top shoe of his. And shove it right up his I know. Butt. <laughs> Some traditions even said the bride had to kiss the foot of the groom. Ah, uh, no, thank you. That'll never happen. No, especially with Colleen, she does not like feet. And I'm not kissing nobody's foot, even if I liked feet. Well, no, it's a baby. Okay. Yeah, well, their teeth because they are get cute. cute. If the bride places her shoe at the headboard on the groom's side of the bed, it would show his sexual pos- possession of her and encourage fertility. Ew. I'll stick that shoe somewhere. Yeah. It's not and it's one. not going to be at the head mm-hmm. of the bed. Be at the... Up your arse. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ancient Incas uh, were considered married. They weren't considered married until they exchanged sandals. Well, that's kind of sweet. I'm okay with that. In North Italy, it was custom that everyone at the wedding tried on the bride's shoes. Okay. <laughs> that brought good luck, apparently. All right. <laughs> Interesting. In Hungary, the groom drinks from the bride's shoe for good luck at the ceremony. Is that why the country is called Hungary? <laughs> a Nobody sweaty ass shoe. After drinking out of a sweaty shoe. Ah, that's so gross. And I remember so when I was younger seeing like nope. something in the eighties was like it was like sexy to drink out of a woman's shoe. It was like some movie or something. Yeah, and I was like, yes. out of a woman's stiletto heel. Yes, I, that's not I remember sexy. seeing it. That's gross. That's gross. And I will not kiss you after that. Ever. Sir. Ever. <laughs> Listerine and tooth there's not enough Listerine and toothpaste. In I know world. what was how sweaty my feet get. And I would not recommend you drink <laughs> anything from my shoe. <laughs> Here's my crock. Let, yeah. let me put some. It won't hold much. There's no. holes in it. Mm. What's wrong? And with I'm wearing you? my I'm shoes with no today. socks today, so they're no, they're extra, extra sweaty and gross. We're we're full of it today. But my shoes look like the Vincent Van Gogh painting. Well, at least they're pretty to drink out of. They might stink and taste terrible. They look. They're different too. They're not the same the um, pattern. Is different in Turkey. The bride writes the names of her single bridesmaids on the bottom of her shoe, and the first name to rub off would be the next one married. How do you have to check every... I guess you just keep checking. (laughs) See, you don't want to drink out of Margaret's shoes either. Um, Great Britain, it's custom that the father put a silver sixpence in the bride's shoe before walking down the aisle for luck and prosperity, which I had that. I did too. Yeah, we had it for our wedding. And then in Sweden, the mother of the bride puts gold coin in the bride's right shoe before walking down the aisle for wealth in the marriage. They're nice. They're nicer in Sweden giving you gold instead of not silver. A, not a sixpence. Yeah. Or a penny. Like some people put pennies in their shoes the for penny good luck. Yep. yep. One of the most interesting superstitions of all. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, <laughs> <you're just> something <laughs> so proud of myself. <laughs> Try not to call you. You're so stupid. Shoopin. Shoopin. You're shoopin. You're shoopin. 
Um, the most interesting <laughs> one is that there was a belief that old shoes retain the spirit of those who originally owned them. And that wearing them can give you their strength, the person for So, like, uh, following in your father's footsteps stems from wearing his shoes. And literally, shoes were passed down like that because no one could afford them. They were expensive. You know, so. I wish that was still possible this day because my children bought shoes in September for school and I already had to replace them because the soles were literally falling off. Because they're busy. It, they're never, busy it's never happened ladies. this quickly before. Usually, you get half a year out of their shoes and we got them at what Walmart. Are they- they, Evie had boots and Ruby had sneakers, and both of the kids' shoes wore completely like <laughs> like they're worn like the there's no tread left. There's, it's not even the tread; the sole separated from the shoe, oh. and the shoe itself was worn off, like the fabric part. <laughs> like both kids, <laughs> they you're not doing it on and purpose. The soles are separated. It's conspiracy. Like they were like had a mouth. It's a shoe spiracy. <laughs> and I'm like looking at them like. We're not buying shoes from Walmart ever again. No. They didn't, they, la- they didn't even last a month, Colleen. That's terrible. It is terrible. I'm like, a month later, I'm like, these shoes are terrible. They look like shit. I'm like, what are you kids doing? And, but it was both of them. It has never happened before. Right. So it's Especially obviously not. I think it would be. It's obviously the shoes. Yeah. The cost went up and the quality went down. A shoe spiracy. You know, and we went to Famous Footwear in the mall. And yeah. we spent like five or ten bucks more. And it'll probably last longer. Probably. Stupid Walmart. Damn. Don't even get me started. Yeah. Anyway. So who knew there were so many sus- superstitions surrounding shoes? You didn't do the last one. I cut you off. No, I said the most. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the That's mo- right. The most, the most interesting is that you wear the old shoes. So if you go to a thrift store and you buy shoes, you're going to get whatever the strengths that that person had. You'll get them. Colleen will never, ever. I've done it before, person. actually. I, I bought a pair of red high heels once for a Halloween costume. They have to look good. Like, they have to be in really good shape. And because I bought look, boots before. That looks sweaty. Yeah, they can have stains in the insides. Then they have to look fairly new. Like Generally, look, I always wear I wear, socks. I mean, I have no problem buying thrift items uh, other than underwear. I won't do that. No, or baby suits. I, don't know. Mm-mm. I mean, if, it's, if, <clears throat> if you need to buy them there, I have, you do it. You know what I mean? Like, do I what you got to do. I don't they sell underwear. Probably sure. not. Unless they're, like, new in package. Yeah. It's an intimate. And idea. that's a thing, really, if you think about, if you want to donate to people, because we do the happy period. We're part of it. Yeah, and I don't do anything. Um, I'm just in the group chat. <laughs> and we, you know, get donations of period products and we give them to people. But underwear is a big thing. People that can't afford Hygiene, these hygiene, pro- hygiene products aren't part of any kind of um, assistance you can get. So if you want to donate something, donating pads, um, diva cups, tampons, uh, underwear, uh, underwear, even socks. socks. These are things that people just can't go get. You can't get them at thrift stores. Soap. Shampoo, Soap, shampoo, toothpaste, razors, toothbrushes. toothpaste, toothbrush. Those are things that people aren't getting. With their food stamps. And that, you know, and that's something that people need in order to get a job. You know, if you can't brush your teeth and wash your hair, wash right. your face. Just those basic you hygiene know, needs. if you have dirty underwear and dirty socks on and dirty hair, nobody's And how do you feel you. about yourself? Right. You know, and like taking a shower makes you feel refreshed and better. And, and if you don't have the soap to clean, then how do you, f- it's just, just human dignity. There's exactly. that. And I think that we need to. So if you want to donate this holiday season to donate, donate to either programs that provide those things, like give them money or donate to food banks and things, those hygiene products. And you could donate to Happy Period North Country if you wanted to. Also, um, we actually just became our own 501C, which means we're a nonprofit. So official. Official. And that means if your donations, you can get a tax write off for those donations. We're, but we only support things in our tri county area. So that's Jefferson, Lewis, and St. Lawrence counties. So if you live other places in the country and you want to help in your area, find a food bank and donate it to the food bank because they're <clears> able to get it out to where you have to get it. And I really think that I think we should really promote that this holiday season. And if you do, if you donate to some place, let's say you donated to you know, your, you have hygiene products of some sort somewhere, let us know. Cause we want to call you out. Yeah. And like, thank you for that. Because I think it's so important. Um, because 
everyone deserves the right to have those products. Like, they I don't do. care what you do for a living. And they're necessities in life. They're they things really you have are. to have. It's like food. You have to eat. You need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I'm off my soapbox. Most of the people making the rules are men and they don't want to. Men are stupid. Oh, I'm sorry. Not all of them. There are some men that are stupid. Especially men who are politicians. Especially wasps. And they're the ones that are politicians. So. What? <laughs> sorry. What? <laughs> Wasps. <laughs> I don't know why that's I don't funny. Know either. Okay, oh, so man. um if you want to support our podcast, you uh should go to patreon.com backslash cousins weird for a dollar a month to become a freaky friend and you get a free sticker and bonus episodes for five dollars a month become a table trender see how fast I can say it. You get a free sticker, you get a bonus episode, you get a monthly chat with us and add free episodes. And a yearly gift. And a yearly gift. And then you always can share by or support us by following us on the platform of your choice. On Facebook and Instagram and sharing our episodes with your friends. It's the best way you get to support our podcast. And if you'd like to reach out to send us a message, you can send us a message to our email. And we are thecousinsweird at gmail.com. Or you can send us a direct message through Instagram or Facebook. And we always share our pictures from our episodes on there. So yes. you get to see people throwing shoes at people. And you can like our episodes. You can share our episodes. You can um, follow us on those Follow things. us and rate us and subscribe. Yes, Please. do all those things. And that stuff's free. And it's all free to you. Subscriptions are free and you get to listen to us for free. How cool and it is that? it reminds you when there's new episodes. It will remind you when there's a new episode. You never miss our nonsense. I know, we're pretty nonsensical. <laughs> but I think that's it. Stay freaky! Bye! Bye!